The movie begins with Vinayak, telling his 14-year-old son, Pandurang, about the legend of Goddess of Prosperity, a symbol of unlimited gold, and food. The earth, is believed to be her womb. When the universe was created, she gave birth to 160 million gods. But the goddess loved her first son, Hester, the most. But Hester has long been forgotten. With no mention of him, in any book. It is because, he wanted his mother's entire gold, and food, for himself. He succeeded in stealing all the gold. But soon as he tried to steal food, rest of the gods attacked him. Every attack, split him in two. The goddess of prosperity intervened, and saved him. But cursed him, so that no one will worship him. And no one will know his name. For centuries, he remained asleep, in his mother's womb. But then, humans, in the village, tumbled, remembered him, and made a temple in his name. These made all the other gods, extremely angry, and is believed to be the reason, behind extreme rainfalls in the village. Pandurang asks, why did their ancestors woke Hester? Vinayak explains, that Hester's curse, is a gift for the villagers. He says to his son, you will understand, once you go inside the goddess's womb. Chapter 1. The year is 1918. Vinayak's mother provides sexual favor, to a local lord, called Sarkar, in the hopes of getting a gold coin. He refuses to give her the coin. Vinayak, and his younger brother, Sadashiv, wait for their mother. Vinayak goes inside a house, to cook food for a monstrous old woman, who is Sarkar's mother, and their grandmother. They have to feed her while she's asleep. She seldom wakes up. Vinayak gives the plate to Sadashiv, saying since Vinayak cooked the food, Sadashiv should feed her. The mother arrives, and stops them from going inside. She takes the plate, and goes to feed her. Vinayak asks her mother to tell Sarkar, that if he doesn't give them the gold coin, they won't take care of his mother. The grandmother wakes up, and screams in pain. The mother goes to check it out. The mother tells the grandmother to sleep, otherwise, Hester will come for her. She goes to sleep. Sarkar dies that night. A funeral is held for him. The mother wants to leave the town with her kids. But Vinayak wants to take the treasure, rumored to be somewhere near Sarkar's house. The mother tells him, that Sarkar spent his entire life, looking for the treasure, but couldn't find it. Vinayak wants to wake up Sarkar's mother, thinking she must know something about the treasure. The mother gets angry, and tells him that they are leaving next morning. While talking outside, Sadashi falls from a tree. His head hit the stone, and he's badly hurt. The mother takes him to a doctor, outside the village, asking Vinayak to feed the grandmother. She tells him, if the woman wakes up, to invoke the name of Hester. He goes to feed the grandmother. Sadashiv dies, on the way to doctor. Vinayak accidentally drops the food, meant for old woman. The woman wakes up, and starts singing. Vinayak goes towards her. The woman wants to know who he is. Vinayak goes inside, and asks the grandmother about the treasure. She asks him to give her some food, or she will eat him. Vinayak gets scared, and runs to the kitchen. The old woman comes up behind him, and ties chain to his leg. She drags him with her. He can't remember the name, he was supposed to invoke. He hides under the bed, but she grabs him by his hair. She grabs a nail out of her face, and tries to eat him. Right then he invokes Hester's name, and she goes to sleep. He frees himself. The mother is back. She tells him about his brother's death. They burn his body, and leave in a boat for Pune city. Vinayak still wants to talk to the grandmother, about the treasure. She shows him the gold coin, that she stole from Sarkar's house, on her way back. He is not content with one, and wants more. She makes him swear, never to come back. Chapter 2. Fifteen years have passed. The year is 1933. Vinayak returns to Tumbad, to look for the treasure, and escape poverty. He looks for his grandmother. The house has been reclaimed by nature, and spider webs. Amidst all this, he sees a beating heart, and a face. She wakes up, but is stuck, with a tree growing out of her body. She says she will tell him about the treasure, if he can set her free from this curse. She wants him to burn her. Vinayak goes to Sarkar's now abandoned house, and claims it for himself. Following the instructions from his grandmother, he spends years digging through land, to reach the treasure. Having found it, he burns his grandmother. Vinayak returns to Pune, to his wife. He gets angry at his wife, because she started selling flour to earn money. And women were not allowed freedom during that time. Also happy for finding the treasure, he hugs his wife. He cleans himself up, and goes to an opium merchant, Raghav. He gives him a gold coin, to pay off his debt, saying he inherited the gold. He tells him, he has three more coins, if he wants to buy. Vinayak practices climbing up, 
and down a rope, while his wife makes wheat flour from grains. Vinayak goes back to Tumbad, climbs down a well, brings back gold coins, and sells it to Raghav. Raghav, having inquired about Vinayak, asks him about the rumored treasure in Sarkar's house, and why Vinayak only brings a handful of coins, each time. Vinayak tells him, that the treasure is real, and tells him to go get it, if he can. Vinayak continues doing this. British troopers inquire Raghav about Vinayak. They threaten him that if he doesn't pay him his opium cut, they'll take away his opium permit. The troop gives him one month. Raghav visits Vinayak's house, and asks his wife about the gold coins. She doesn't know. Vinayak returns home. He seems to have injured his leg. Raghav wants Vinayak to include him, in his treasure hunting. Vinayak buys a motorcycle, and learns to drive it. His wife gives birth to a boy, Pandurong. Vinayak has grown extremely rich, over the years. The troop visits Raghav, and tells him that he has been promoted. So, he is increasing his opium cut. Next day, the troop sees Raghav again, and gives him two days to pay the money. Desperate for money, Raghav sells his widowed daughter-in-law, to Vinayak as his mistress. Vinayak tells his wife, that she is the new maid. The girl asks Vinayak for money in exchange for valuable information. Vinayak gives her the money. They both get intimate. She tells him about Raghav's plan to follow Vinayak to Tumbad, and claim the treasure for himself. On his next visit, Raghav follows him. Vinayak watches Raghav looking for the treasure. Vinayak tricks Raghav, by showing him going down a well, and coming back up with gold coins. Raghav takes the same rope, down the well. He opens a hatch, that leads to the womb of the goddess. He takes a rope down, into the womb, and accidentally falls. Vinayak is shown making a doll, out of wheat dough. The walls inside the womb, seem to be breathing. Raghav sees a box on the floor, and opens it. Inside, there's a doll made of dough. Hester attacks Raghav. Vinayak arrives inside the womb. He sees Raghav conjoined to the wall. He tells him to go to sleep, or Hester will come for him. Vinayak creates a circle from wheat flour, around himself. He opens a box that has the wheat doll inside. Hester arrives. But he is unable to pass the wheat circle. Vinayak throws the doll on the ground. Hester grabs the doll to eat. Vinayak tears the lion cloth from Hester's back, grabs as much gold coin as he can, and comes back in the circle. He burns Raghav to end his suffering. Hester follows Vinayak, but Vinayak closes the hatch before Hester can escape. Vinayak's wife throws his mistress, out of the house. Final chapter. The year is 1947. India gains independence. Vinayak is practicing, climbing up and down the rope. But he is getting old. He makes his son, Pandurong, practice rope climbing. Next morning, Vinayak takes his son with him. On the way, Vinayak explains everything to his son. The make the doll for Hester. Vinayak throws the doll away, and tells his son, to only practice today, and not to bring the doll. They descend down, into the womb. Vinayak explains, that Hester, unable to steal the food from his mother, remains always hungry, looking for food. But having been cursed, he also developed a fear from the grains. That is why he cannot enter the circle made of grains, but also latches onto the dolls made of dough, to eat. Pandurong reveals, that he brought the doll with him. Hester arrives. Pandu tears his lion cloth, grabs the coins, and barely manages to escape. Vinayak gets angry at him. Back home, Pandu's mother asks him, what was there? But he refuses to tell her. She slaps him. Vinayak comes to know from a friend, that Sarkar's house was taken by the Indian government, due to lack of paperwork. Vinayak tells Pandurong about Sarkar's house. Vinayak shows Pandurong, his safe, where he has kept a lot of gold coins, and money, to last them a lifetime. Pandurong suggests, stealing the entire purse of Hester. Since that's where, all the gold coins come from. He suggests, to make a lot of wheat dolls, to keep Hester busy, while they steal his purse. They go to Sarkar's house, and start making a lot of dolls. They create a circle around the hatch, descend into the womb, create the circle inside. They take the dolls out of the bag. To Vinayak's surprise, they see a number of Hester clones. One for each doll. They get surrounded by an army of Hester clones. They start throwing the dolls at them. Hester clones fight each other for the doll. One of the Hester clones falls into the circle, and gets burned up. With no way to escape, Vinayak takes the dolls, and ties them to himself to act as bait, so his son can escape. Hester clones attack Vinayak, he leads them all outside, where they burn up due to the circle outside the hatch. Pandurong climbs out safely. He sees his father outside, having been cursed like his grandmother, and his friend Raghav. Vinayak gives his son, 
Hester's purse, that he managed to steal. Horrified by his father's state, he refuses to take the purse, and burns his father. He tells his father to go to sleep, or Hester will come for him. The movie ends with Ponderong, closing the door to Sarkar's house. Like, and subscribe, for more videos like this.